Playing passively will win you games, but it doesn't improve you as a player. Playing aggressively will lose you the matches, but it allows you to explore the limits of the game and improve your understanding of the overarching system. What is up jokesters, this is your big homie Jokesta, and today we'll talk about how to play aggressive. Not just pushing and dying all the time, but actually learn something and improving as a player. Previously, I talked about how to use a minimap. In the Game Sense series, check that out if you haven't yet. Also, I received a lot of comments on can you make a video on movements. While I'm thinking about making another video on movements, check out one of my previous videos where I talk about movements on the top right corner. I decided to make a series of videos talking about every aspect of Game Sense. If you guys don't want to miss out on any of these episodes of the Game Sense series, make sure to hit the subscribe icon and the bell to get alerted whenever I upload a brand new video. If you guys do enjoy the series, make sure to hit that like button as well. In today's episode, we'll talk about aggressive and how to play aggressively and understand the concept of it and why it is essential to us. Here's a list of things that are related to playing aggressively and what we will cover in this video. Confidence, utilizing cover, creating 1v1s, working together, when to push, positioning, what weapons to use, what perks to use. Let's start off with confidence. A ton of people always tell me they get nervous when they engage with the enemy. First of all, the more you do something, the more comfortable you'll be, whether that's in life or in Call of Duty Mobile. You talk to a girl for the first time, you're going to be nervous, but the more you talk to any girls, the less nervous you're going to get talking to girls. As for Call of Duty Mobile, the more gunfights you get into, the less nervous you'll get, and the more steady your aim will become. You have to envision yourself succeeding when you get into a game, you have to see yourself winning every engagement and becoming the best player because if you don't, the other players in the game are going to bully you around and it's not going to be a great time. If you don't believe in yourself, then nobody will. But if you do, then you can do anything. And I can guarantee you, once you realize this and you get this into your mind that you have to be confident, you're going to win. Then you're going to become a better player. Now that we have you in the right state of mind, let's hop into some in-game tips. Utilizing cover. Utilizing cover is a big one that comes to mind when I was making this video. Some of the best players in the game know how to use cover to their advantage and save themselves a ton of health in doing so. We'll start off with the walls. There's going to be a deeper dive in hugging walls and getting better cover in another game sense video, but we're going to do some baby steps for now. You just need to understand how to use them. Hugging walls or getting cover is very important and you do not always want to be out in the open. So make sure you get something to have some cover. Rush as fast as you can and get behind something. Let's say that you're in the kitchen and you're about to push my spawn. A pro player would be right here behind that tree waiting for you. To win that gunfight, you need to grab that tree for cover. Show him that the tree belongs to you. Sometimes you will win a gunfight, but you cannot always stay in one spot you need to rotate to another location. So you run across the street, getting cover. In short term, hug wall as much as you can when you're playing aggressively. As I said, I'll make a deeper dive on this topic shortly, but this is just to utilize cover. You know, just practice what I'm talking to you right now. Just use as many walls and cover as much as you can, but just push up aggressively, get some cover, and then peek your targets whenever they pop out. Creating 1v1s. Making every fight a 1v1 will help you the most when you find yourself fighting alone. This is actually the reason most people can get those 20 kill games so fast or more on the scoreboard. Nobody wants to fight a whole squad that is just focusing on you. If the players are actually decently skilled, it is doubtful that you will come out on top of that battle. To counter all the squad members shooting at you, it is best to try to single out one player at a time to engage with. Now this ties back to utilizing your surrounding cover to make sure you can't get sidestabbed. The more players you kill on the other team, the more chances you will win the engagement. If you can draw the enemy away from each other and catch one off guard, this will make your life a lot easier if you do find yourself getting triple teamed. Now try to do damage to all three instead of hard focusing on one guy. Now what I mean by that is just don't rush one guy just because you, you know, lit him up to 20%. Don't forget about the rest of his teammate. Just try not to get tunnel visioned. Working together. 
Notice there's a bit of a difference when we talked about playing with a squad rather than playing solo, because you have a team to back you up if something goes wrong. A lot of pre-made squads in rank have great callouts. As I talked about in my previous Game Sense video, they can contribute you getting into high kill games. Regardless of whether your enemies are low or full health, callouts from your teammates can make a huge difference. What I suggest doing is whether you're playing ranked or public matches, is to call out with your teammate and tell each other which enemies are low first. Of second of all, I suggest is you focusing on one player which gives you an advantage, give the enemy a little chance to survive. If you kill one of them, it will make a thousand times easier in pushing the rest of the team and winning the engagement. Fair warning though, I am talking about playing with a pre-made squad. This is basically not going to work with randoms as you know most of the randoms in Call of Duty Mobile are kind of trash. When to push. Knowing when to push is a massive aspect of playing aggressively in Call of Duty Mobile. Let's say that you got one of the members of that team really low. He's covering behind that wall and his teammate got his back if you try to push him. This is where you need to understand how many players are alive. Are all of his teammate on A site? Is he alone? Your map awareness is another big help in playing aggressively. You can look at the enemy shooting in the minimap. If you know there's one or two shooting across the map, this could mean that he's alone and you can just push him at the right time. Pushing at the right time is going to get them caught off guard. You have to learn to pick them off at the unexpected time. This will take time to master and this does require a lot of experience. The goal here is not to kill that one player, but to kill the entire team. So make a strategy, make a plan on killing the entire team, not just one player and then dying right away. Don't push at the wrong time. Let's say that you're playing search and destroy and it's the final round. Please for the love of Call of Duty, don't rush this. Play smart because pushing this might get you killed and leaving your team a 4v5 is such a terrible situation. You do not want to cost this game because of your pushing unless you're 100% confident that you're going to kill everybody in the lobby, all right? The and the last thing, pushing at the right time. Let's say there's 10 seconds on the clock, it's a 1v1 and you hear the bomb going down. This is a perfect time to push him and kill the planter. Remember, pushing isn't just going for kills, but actually making a big difference in the game. Positioning. You guys want to position yourself to succeed. This meaning getting better cover when possible, relocating when the need is picking them off when they're rotating, not putting yourself at risk, playing smart in general, etc. Getting the first kill then, relocating quickly and getting the next kill. Make sure you have the upper hand when you're getting kills. Don't stay in one spot after getting one kill or two kills. Always position yourself in a better spot. So don't forget about positioning. Just reposition every time you get a kill, move on to the next one. What are the best weapons to use for aggressive playstyle? Right now, the best weapons for aggressive playstyle is the SMG and the shotgun. Now, I can't say, oh, this is the best submachine gun ever because every season they change everything up. So one day it might be the new gun, the next day it's the old weapon. So it gets a little weird. They go back and forth and over the last few seasons, it's always been the Rust 79U. This is a bad boy because it's been kind of kicking butts since season one and this is the, my pick for the best submachine gun for playing aggressive. Now I know there's a Cordite is out there and it's new and stuff but we have a long way to go until it proves that it can be one of the best aggressive weapons out there. So here's the attachment that I'm running for the Rust 79U. I'm running the quick draw foregrip and the extended mags. Now for the shotgun, I would have to say the KRM-262 or the BY-15. Those are the best shotguns to use and when you're playing aggressive. Here's the attachments I would use for those shotguns, laser sight, long barrel, or fast reload. One of the last things that I wanted to talk about the weapons is the suppressor. Playing with the suppressor is good too. You are getting behind enemy lines, so having it hides you from the enemy. But if you're also playing against a pre-made team, you're entirely screwed because they can call you out in the voice call. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. It's only good for like solo rings, maybe. What perks do you need for it to play aggressively? 
Now, last but not least is perks. First off, we'll talk about red perks. Lightweight is the best perk for an aggressive player, just rushing into places looking for cover. This is going to work to help you become an aggressive player. Just remember that many players don't use lightweight and you can get to covers a lot faster than they can. The second is the green perk. The best one for this season is the cold blooded perk since those shock RC cars are becoming really annoying this season. But once they go away, I kind of recommend the toughness or ghost depending on who you're playing against and who you're playing with. Ghost is for more of a solo queue and toughness is more for a pre-made team. If you have a pre-made team, toughness is kind of a nice way to go. Hopefully you got a teammate that takes out the UAVs or the VTOL or the helicopter or something like that as soon as they appear. And the third one is getting dead silence. And when you play aggressive, you want to be dangerous but also silent so they can't know where you're located and there's a lot of people actually listening to footsteps and this is something i've learned over the years is that everybody has headphones and no matter what they could be broken headphones pretty bad headphones some players have a 200 dollars headphones and they can hear every footstep so using that perk helps you out a lot to get out of problems and there is something else that you could use there is also suppressors you guys can even use that to be even more deadly but suppressors are easily heard through headphones as well so it's gonna make you undetected on the radar or the mini map but people can still hear your suppressor Next time you're playing, just remember to think about being confident because this will help you win against other players. Let me know what next topic I should cover for Game Sense series. Are you struggling with something in, you know, in your game? Something that bothers you a lot and you want more details about? I've made a video about movements and a lot of comments were talking about movements, something updated to that. So I was wondering like what kind of movement would you like to see? Cause I actually made a whole dedicated video for movement. Maybe there's something that you guys want to know a little bit more about, uh, that would help me out to making my next videos and stuff like that. I put a lot of work and time into these videos. I would really appreciate it a lot. If you guys can check out this new streaming platform where I do stream and I do rank games. I also do scrims and Playing a lot of scrims help a lot of people that watch the streams become a lot better. And if you guys want to know a little bit more how to improve your game style, how to improve your movements, how to communicate better, definitely come on over, follow the channel down there. It would be a link in the description. Stop by once uh, whenever I start streaming, stop by, say hello, and uh, check out the scrims and rank that I play. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe icon with the bell to get alerted whenever I upload a brand new video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.